Sean Kidney here, CEO of the Climate Bonds Initiative. We're about to start our webinar on the ICT provisions of the EU taxonomy and sustainable finance. People are still joining. We'll get going on the content in a couple of minutes. I'm going to do a bit of introductions while people continue to join. We have about 60 people online now and about 130 registered, so I'm expecting a few more to dial in. With me today are Carol Cronenberg, who's the Associate Director of the European Bank of Reconstruction and Development and fellow technical expert group on Sustainable Finance member. We've uh, got to know each other very well over the last two years of hard work. Mm -hmm. Uh, and today we're going to be presenting the ICT components of the taxonomy. We've also invited on from Telefonica, uh, Hema Esteban Garido, who's the head of ESG Investors and Non-Financial Reporting, or the director, and uh, Maya Omazabal Herrero, who's uh, the general manager of environment and climate change. And sorry, Maya, for my poor pronunciation in Spanish. Yeah. Uh, but thank you for joining us today. Um, Telefonica, I was keen, we were keen to have involved because they did Europe's first telco green bonds uh, a little while ago now, but a tremendous success. And we want to see much more in the way of reporting to investors and also green bond issuance out of the telco and the information communications technology sector going forward. We need to if we're going to meet our climate goals. So. Emma and Maya will talk a little bit about what was involved in that, the sorts of things that could be uh, done in the future, because today we're not only talking about the provisions we've put in the recommendations that we've made to the Commission last month, but also the future work. We've made a couple of recommendations about where to go next in the taxonomy work, and we're going to tease that out. The European taxonomy is part of the Action Plan on Sustainable Finance of the European Commission that was announced some two years ago as a result of the EU High Level Expert Group on Sustainable Finance's report. Uh, I had the privilege of also serving on that particular HLEG, as we called it, Technical Expert Group. The Commission took the report, the report took the recommendation and has basically said, yes, we're doing this. It was a very exciting day when that happened. The Green Bond Standard, the EU Sustainable Benchmarks, and perhaps most importantly in terms of the architecture of reporting in Europe, the implementation of the recommendations of the Task Force on Climate Related Disclosure in, to EU regulation have all been part of the work we've been doing within the Technical Expert Group. There are other measures also as part of the action plan. There's an eco-label, for example, for retail investment products, uh, consumer protection, if you like, for that and various other measures. In the regulations that are being sorted out this year, we're moving to a situation where investors and corporations and banks will be required to make disclosures around their climate risks in their portfolios, and they'll be able to make disclosures around their sustainable investments as well. Now, if you're disclosing something that's seen as bad, you're going to want to balance it with disclosing something that's seen as good. And we've seen this already. We have 50 major asset managers working already to apply the taxonomy to their portfolios and to understand how to manage the reporting aspects to it and to start disclosing. There is a two-year implementation period for this. We understand that it's going to take two reporting cycles before we have adequate richness of data to do what we've said all along we will be doing, making this reporting mandatory. So at the end of 2022, if you're going to report on anything to do with sustainability, you will need to reference the taxonomy in Europe. You won't be able to make up your own ideas or views about what are sustainable for the purposes of the European regulation. This will have a flow on effect to different parts of the market. First, investors will and are already asking the corporations they invest in about what they are doing that meets the taxonomy. That will happen not only in Europe, but internationally. We will see companies in Canada, in Brazil, 
in Singapore being asked to provide data to the investors about what they've got that qualifies under the European taxonomy. We will also see green bonds from overseas that are issued in Europe have to use the taxonomy. You won't be able to make up your own views and see what the market thinks. You'll need to say how you align to the taxonomy to issue under the European Green Bond Standard and many other measures. This is a pivotal, a foundational piece of work for how we go ahead in addressing the environmental objectives that the Commission has laid out as critically important. In this work, we focused on climate at this stage, but there are more, there's more to it. We're looking at climate change mitigation, the biggest threat to the sustainability of our economies and the planet, or at least the human species living on the planet so far. We've looked at climate adaptation and resilience issues. We've also looked in what are called do no significant harm provisions, an initial look, I should say, of the various other of the four objectives that we will eventually develop more taxonomy criteria around. Circular economy, um, protection of natural areas, uh, pollu uh, pollution measures, reducing pollution, etc. Now, these can all be seen as subsets of the climate discussion in the sense they're all about the sustainability and the resilience of the natural environment and of the planet. They're all interlinked. So at this stage, it's a strong climate focus as the first step. We will, we expect to eventually in this work to be looking at social issues. At Climate Bonds Initiative, we think there is a direct link between climate resilience requirements, and we are going to have a century of climate volatility now, and the measures we need to take to meet the sustainable development goals, all of which can be seen as measures of climate resilience. Work needs to be done on what that means for investors to make it easy for investors and a market to flourish around meeting those climate resilience come SDG, UN Sustainable Development Goals. That's the future. Of course, we're in the middle of a severe crisis at the moment. This crisis at the very minimum tells us something about the sort of things we need to do to ensure resilience. We will have a century of pandemics that's been clear. The IPCC and the World Health Organization have been warning about this for the last 30 years. Pathogens jump between species in periods of degraded environments and particular shifts of climate and so on. We know that. That was the Black Death in the 500s and then 1300s and the 1600s. We're going to see that this century. How do we prepare for it? Well, we've learned the hard way, we need greater redundancy and resilience in our health systems. I think we'll come out of this crisis with a visceral understanding of what it means to prepare for the next pandemic, which will put us in a much better situation. But it's more than that. We've got to look at social protection measures. It's not enough to say, we'll worry about that if there's a crisis and 20% of the people on the workforce are in the unemployed sector, in the informal sector. They have to have access to some way of eating when we have a shock like this. And we're learning the hard way about the, these are climate resilience measures that we have to institute going forward. The stimulus. We need to make sure we inoculate against catastrophic climate shocks, which is what we'll have if we do not meet IPCC's 1.5 degree target, which involves a 50% cut in emissions in 10 years. So we've got to think of the mitigation agenda as inoculation against the worst kinds of crises that we could have. And they're very grim, the scenarios of four degrees to six degrees to eight degrees more. Now, ICT is a part of this mix. We've said that very clearly in the taxonomy report. Carol Cronenberg co-led the work in this area, and he's going to lead us off on our discussion. We've got this idea that the taxonomy is a toolkit for the future. But Carol, this is your graphic. Tell us what you mean. Yeah, thank you, uh, thank you, Sean. Um, yeah. Let me first introduce myself a little bit. I work in the EBRD, which is a multilateral development bank. Um, we are extremely busy at the moment um, because, in the end, the bank was being established in the 90s to basically to deal with another shock, and that was the fall of the Iron Curtain and the fall of the Soviet Union, and basically helping our countries of operation in dealing with, I would say, getting into, I would say, more market-orientated economies 
an economy that works better, basically developed as a transition bank. And you see at this moment with the COVID crisis that uh, there is a high demand on us, specifically in our countries where we work, um, dealing with, I would say, huge packages of, uh, of support, of emergency support, working capital for the private sector companies that we work with. Um, so indeed, um, as a development bank, following these sustainable development objectives, uh, also this crisis makes us aware why we, why we are there. Uh, in this respect, um, uh, the COVID crisis also makes us understand that um, development needs to go together also with, with green development. I would say this is only one crisis. The, the climate crisis has not gone away. It's still there. So it's also very much about how do we shape our work also in the near future uh, using, uh, using criteria for what is green. And in that respect, the, uh, the EU taxonomy is uh, giving us a, a very interesting and a very nice toolbox. So basically, it's almost like a uh, Swiss army knife. How can we deal with this, uh, this crisis? What, what, is, what, what, what are components in a project that can be considered green? How do I shape my projects in such a way that they, that they have uh, green benefits? And how do we report on that? Uh, so in that respect, the taxonomy itself is, is just a, I would say, a, a very, I would say, substantial document with a lot of, uh, I would say, thinking around it on, on criteria, uh, thresholds, numbers, um, uh, references to legislation, um, also reference to, uh, I would say, one of the knives on this knife is, uh, is related, to the, uh, it's related to the ICT sector, and that's what we would like to, uh, to discuss today. So this, this army knife is really what represents for me the EU taxonomy, which is a tool, but it's in the end, it's what you do with it and what you make of it. So we call it a procurement plan for the program. Yeah, yeah you should you, you we could rephrase it like that. Yeah. <laughs> and in that respect, the, 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 the technological group has also, I would say, um, uh, made a statement related to the corona crisis uh, earlier this week. So it will be interesting to see how the technical expert group is looking at the taxonomy in the light of the corona crisis as well. And uh, let me draw your attention to that. It's available in uh, major newspapers, everywhere from the New York Times, where the press has run a story on the TEG, the technical expert group statement that we put out uh, last Sunday night or Monday morning. And it is essentially saying we need to grow in a crisis. We have to make sure the future is a sustainable one. And we do at least have some tools on the table. And the taxonomy provides guidance for the sort of things we should be focusing on. Not everything, but a lot. And that makes our job much easier in determining the nature of policy settings. So let's keep working on that. But in the ICT area, Carol, tell us a bit more about um, what we've done, this, this particular slide, dividing it up between green, transition enabling, and where you see ICT fitting. Yeah, well, ICT is, of course, a very challenging sector because um, on one hand, it is, um, uh, I would say, being blamed for, I would say, a lot of an increase in electricity use at the moment. Uh, the ICT sector in Europe is using about 8 to 10 percent of the electricity. Potentially, it's at the moment much more, given all these Zoom conferences and everybody doing a lot of things on, on ICT. And it's expected that in, uh, in, 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 in 10 years' time, it will be about one fifth of all the electricity being used in one Europe. Fifth? Also, uh, one fifth will be related to the ICT sector. And I'm not talking only about uh, data centers or, um, or telecommunication, but also the consumer products like, like iPads and, and phones that are basically using energy or use energy when they are being produced. So it's a, it's, it's a highly important sector uh, looking, uh, looking forward. Can, can I ask a question of Maya here? Uh, presuming this is a displacement effect here, right? So as people are moving, are using more net, seeing more Netflix, they're not going to the movies or they're using the iPads or something else. Is that true or is that just a myth? What do you mean? If if with the COVID, with the with the <coughs> crisis, with Carol's sorry. been saying there's going to be an increase in energy use for ICT. Yeah, yeah. no, and knowing that goes our, up. knowing in the telecom networks that we are operating at the moment. So, although the traffic has increased uh, between forty or fifty percent in our networks, the electricity consumption is almost uh, the same as, as it was in I mean wow. in January. And this is because, I mean, the networks we, we do have are prepared to this, uh, to this increase in, in traffic. 
So moment. you're planning for this increase and keeping energy down. So it's proactive yeah, planning. I mean, our networks are, uh, and for, for I mean, all the competitors could be could answer to you. And in we we are prepared for the future, and and we I mean, is the future that that it's here now? But the traffic we expect in our networks in uh, in five years because of the of the five G because of of the Internet of Things coming on uh, in a, in a more broad way, we expect this uh, this increase in traffic in in several years. So we we are facing it. Uh, in just some months, so I mean in some weeks, so it's increasing uh, in an amazing way. But uh, the the electricity consumption is not increasing in in, in that in that way. So, no. But but so, I mean, have to tell Kurt, Sorry, Emma, go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I just was going to say that, uh, and I think that is is uh, worth it to mention to Carl uh, comment on the middle of this crisis that we are right now. We are experiencing experiencing a, an increase on traffic, on mobile traffic of 45%, more or less. The, uh, through fixed networks, the traffic has increased by 30%. And for example, we have seen uh, the use of WhatsApp, Skype, WebEx, Spotify, Zoom, and these kind of things increase by five to eight times the, the kind of traffic that we had before of the crisis. No? So we, we are, uh, I have to say that nowadays and in the middle of the crisis that we are right now, we, we have become kind of a uh, very basic and, and supporting the economy uh, industry. No? So, Carol, this is yeah. happening right in front of our very eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, so, it's it's, this is real, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's very interesting because your question also, what, what is it replacing? And that is really about, about it also demonstrating very much about the thinking of the taxonomy. Because on one hand, uh, you can you can talk about uh, what is a green data center, what is, uh, how can we basically green the data, uh, the, the ICT sector in itself, uh, decreasing energy use. But what makes the, uh, the ICT sector, I would say, highly relevant for the whole Paris alignment discussion, decarbonization discussion, is basically the enabling side of the, uh, of the sector. It is basically being seen as as a key sector that will lead us to this low carbon economy uh, by, for instance, um, enabling uh, electrification of mm -hmm. transport, uh, which is highly dependent on, on software and on basically hardware charging stations, uh, but also in, in light of, um, for instance, climate change and climate adaptation. Uh, we, um, we will experience, uh, I would say, much more problems in the future with growing of crops water management, um, all the, uh, I would say, spatial data, uh, specific data for precision farming, all that is dependent, is highly dependent on, um, on, uh, on, on ICT solutions. But also limiting our traffic. And uh, it's very interesting that we don't have uh, the conference now in Madrid and that we all go there, but we're basically just using ICT at the moment to, uh, to, present, uh, to present this topic, which is, uh, I would say, a great example on how ICT will enable us, I would say, to, to keep, I would say, the economy going um, with, with, I would say, significantly lower, lower CO2 footprint. So they're basically the, three ele the two elements of the, uh, why the um, ICT sector is important, which is, uh, first of all, looking at how can we decarbonize the sector itself. Secondly, more importantly, how can the ICT sector enable other sectors to green? And I would also like to bring in a third element, and that is basically the, the source of electricity being used to, for, to, for ICT. So basically also greening the electricity sector and that connection there and making the electricity sector and electricity production deep green by, renewal, by using renewables or solar. Mm -hmm. I would say an element that is also uh, explicitly part of the, uh, of the taxonomy. But you've raised an extra element, which is resilience. And of course, that's, that's a point. What we are doing right at this very minute is using a tool which is incredibly important in a crisis. It allows us to be more resilient to society that we can keep communicating even though we're in lockdown. And, and I think that's a little understood um, benefit of these kinds of investments. So there's a lot of areas. We, we haven't covered a huge amount of territory in the um, actual report, right? This is what we've covered. So perhaps just tell us what we've done so far, Carol, in terms of our recommendations, and then we might go to further areas of work that we're already flagging need to be done. 
Yeah, we, we, we noticed that the, uh, the ICT sector was difficult to grasp in the, uh, in the uh, I would say it's, it's relatively easy. Uh, yeah, I know you have been uh, co-chairing the electricity sector, and of course I'm not uh, being, I was very jealous because electricity is uh, basically only does one product and that are electrons. Are and, you kidding uh, me? He yeah. is, he's dissing me here. Yeah, it, yeah, was yeah, been, yeah, yeah. it was a tortuous yeah. year, but yeah. anyway, go ahead. Well, the, pro the problem with the ICT sector is that it is so strongly connected and integrated with other sectors that basically seeing it as a standalone sector is, is, really, is really challenging. And the second element is the, um, well, basically it's also to determine what is, what is green in the ICT sector. I would say uh, you could be very simplistic and say, well, you use renewable energy and you're green. Um, but in the end, it's, it's not only about green electricity, it's also very much about how efficient or how effective are you. And of course, the ICT sector is a sector, well, I would say almost 50% of operations or I would say the operational cost of, of data processing is, is related to energy. So that's a very high number. So yeah. there is a very strong understanding of energy efficiency, but how to deal with them. Well, for data, centers uh, we, we came up with i would say just making a, a good reference to the european code of conduct for data center energy efficiency which was basically be, be, being prepared by the joint research center being published in 2019 so basically compliance with that um, standard uh, that code of conduct will basically qualify the data center as, as, as green we have made an attempt to do the similar I would say approach for telecom networks and of course there is this uh, energy efficiency standard uh, set by the uh, European Telecommunication Standards Institute but we couldn't get I would say full um, agreement with the experts if that would be the right way forward um, of course we were thinking in the same way as how we dealt with the manufacturing sector that we would say well let's select that the, the 10 percent best in the market uh, that will basically be our I would say dots on the horizon that's how the market needs to develop um, but of course if you look at telecom networks and more in general about data yeah, the, the, what is exactly the metric uh, the metric that you use so that are, are key challenges there and interestingly if you go even a, a step deeper then in the end it's not even the data centers or the, the telecom networks that are i would say in the end the biggest energy consumers it's in the end it's the software that is being run and it is the data that are being uh, uh, transported that are basically determining the, um, the, uh, the, the energy efficiency. So in the end, the biggest savings you could in the end achieve by basically also working very much on, on elements like developing energy efficient uh, software, green software, but also defining a bit better about uh, how, well, how do you deal with redundancies? How do you deal with... Um, Speed shaving, how do you deal with I was uh, bringing things out of the data centers into the cloud? Uh, that are also elements that are very much and uh, very important for the greening of the sector and that were not sufficiently captured in the elements that we have uh, done there. So there is a lot of work to be done. Mm -hmm. This work needs to be done very much in cooperation with sectors where the software applications are being uh, are being uh, well being affected. So, so the data centers is obviously a critical one. We've, is it something like 3% of global electricity is going to data centers nowadays, is that right? So, yeah, I know it's about 20 uh, terawatt hours at the moment, but 200 terawatt hours that goes into it. So it's, 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 you know, it's several percentages of the, of the, of the uh, our worldwide ele electricity use. Okay, so but this is a high priority. And it's, so it's, a high pri it's a high priority. On the other hand, it's also a sector that is relatively easy to decarbonize if you would yeah. say we use renewable electricity. Right. But of course, the, the, the supply of renewable electricity is limited, so we need to be very careful. Mm. But, but so the promise by companies like Microsoft to go net zero carbon by a certain date, that's part of that because their data centers are a big part of their footprint. And that's a, presumably yes. something we should welcome, right? We should, how do we tell we whether it's ambitious enough? Yeah, well, I would say there are two ambitions. Um, of course, you can, as a Microsoft, you can say, okay, we will only use renewable energy for our data centers. But of course, you need also to build on this. We need to have sufficient availability of renewable energy because it's not only the demand is not only coming from data centers, it's also coming from industry that is going to electrify. It's also coming from the transport mm -hmm. sector that is going to electrify. And everybody will competing for the same, I uh, would say, uh, supply of uh, of renewable energy so therefore it's so important 
not only to focus on the on the um, on the on the source, but very much also on the demand side. That's the big challenge in the in the ICT sector. How to deal with that? Uh, okay, uh, just before I let you go, Carolyn, we we turn to um, Hema and Maya again. Data driven solutions for GHG emissions. Well, what does that actually mean again? Give me well, an example. Well, I just gave already an example for the uh, for the transport sector. Where I'm trying to tease out the eBay story, Carol. I'm sorry, I'm being transparent. <laughs> yeah, well, that that is not one of them. But let me uh, let me try to uh, to explain it as well. But okay. if you look at the uh, at the specific solutions, uh, then you think about electric vehicle charging, you think about precision agriculture, you think about um, uh, smart buildings, where they basically you where the, where basically the, the 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 whole building operations are being made resource efficient by using uh, ICT solution. And then of course, all the investments that are related to these, I would say solutions, uh, they are being considered green according to the taxonomy. So that's basically what it meant. And how do you tell at this stage, we haven't got a threshold? How do you tell whether they qualify? No, there is no threshold there because if these solutions are actually essential to, to, to green these activities, then they count automatically 100%, no threshold there. Okay. So uh, I need to just tease that agriculture. You're a you know, sophisticated farmer. You've got some precision tools on your farm, but you're also using satellite data and maybe a feed from an interpretation agency to figure out what the right crop is to plant now, um, you know, because of forecast of weather conditions, soil, uh, moisture, and so on. Does that mean that the satellite data and the services that I'm getting qualify automatically, as well as the toolkit I'm using on the farm? I would say yes. In okay. that respect, yes, yes. Of course, it. Uh, of course, you can get a little bit of an uh, an area where basically a satellite is serving multiple purposes. Yeah. And then we need to look at at a more granular approach. But in general, if it's a dedicated satellite for uh, uh, agricultural applications, then this would. Uh, yeah, it's basically also. It basically serves two elements. Eh? It's only. It's also the water side. It will be one of the other six components of the EU taxonomy. It's also very much the plantation side, but we really have to, to take climate change and weather related elements into the, into the uh, operations. And it has a, uh, a strong water pollution element into it uh, because potentially less, less leakage of fertilizers into groundwater. And of course the climate mitigation element where you basically are using, I would say, your resources far more efficient uh, for, produ for production of crops. And also, I would say, less loss of crops in, in the agricultural sector because every, mm, every, good point. Percent that, every percent that you lose in your production is also basically energy efficiency um, uh, loss. Well, this is a big area, folks, isn't it? Now, most people haven't been thinking about this, but it is. But just a, my a technical question from one of our listeners. Do we actually have the tools to measure GHG emissions across all the sorts of areas that Carol's talking about? Uh. This is a good question. We, we are measuring uh, directly some of our products and services that we are selling to the different, different clients. So in transport clients, uh, green cities, uh, smart cities, sorry. And, uh, and we, are, we are already me measuring through the efficiency in energy consumption, in electricity consumption, how uh, uh, the amount of, of emissions were avoiding annually. Mm -hmm. So, but we, I mean, this is still a job to be done and uh, we are working with, uh, with um, an English uh, consultancy and, and other competitors, we are doing all the same because there is no, no standardization body at the moment, uh, no, no standards on, in this topic, but because we are all working together in this kind of, of things, I think uh, it's a good approach. I mean, we, we need to measure because then we can show what is the really impact of, of our sector in terms of enabling carbon emissions in other sectors. Okay, so um, we've heard about satellite companies, we've heard about agricultural companies who could be doing stuff in this area. There's a bunch of service companies, there's Shell with its electric charging system, there's all sorts of stuff that could be here. We're gonna focus a little bit more on the, te on the Telefonica story as a case example, as part of teasing out what else we can do. Uh, I, I mean, first, Emma, just give us the headlines of the bond issuance, because it was a landmark bond in Europe that you put out. Just um, size, uh, oversubscription rates, things like that, so people know how it fits. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, we, as you said, we were the first uh, telecom company all over the world issuing a, a green bond. Uh, the green bond was uh, 1 billion euros, and it was uh, devoted to the uh, fiber uh, substitution 
of uh, copper uh, infrastructure, telecom infrastructure in Spain, right? We, we set up a proper uh, framework that you all can, can uh, see on our website that was uh, devoted to our, uh, specifically our two main uh, strategic guidelines of our uh, climate change strategy, which is on one hand, uh, decarbonizing ourselves, and on the other hand, uh, helping uh, decarbonizing the rest of the industries through digitalization. In, in our case, and, and to come into your question, uh, Son, uh, the, the Green Bond was uh, devoted to our own infrastructure, uh, let's say modernization and digitalization. And mm -hmm. we are uh, 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 taking, um, uh, I mean, uh, uh, putting a, a new infrastructure of, of fiber in Spain, uh, which is very aggressive, uh, a very aggressive implementation plan. Uh, one of the most, uh, you know, that Spain is one of the most, uh, uh, the, the, one of the biggest countries in Europe with more fiber uh, to the home. Uh, compared with other other countries, we have uh, our our CEO says always that we have more fiber in Spain than in the UK, in France, in Germany, and uh, Italy all together. Really? Um, yeah, <laughs> really, really. So Spain leads the way. Yeah. In this in this case, yes. <laughs> Not in others, <laughs> but in this case, fortunately, yes. <laughs> well, luckily there are many ways Spain leads the way. So, yeah. but you're, but this is a significant savings, right? You mentioned a year of eighty five percent savings. Can that be true to shift yes. fiber? Yes, I mean fiber is uh, eighty by five percent more efficient in terms of energy per customer than copper. Wow. And the point here is that we are uh, deleting and you know putting away and moving away all the copper infrastructure and replacing it uh, uh, with fiber. And it means that we are closing a lot of equipment and a lot of, uh, let's say, uh, uh, places that in the past were needed to really uh, put the copper networks working uh, uh, for our customer. And this is why, and together with the new such more energy efficient, uh, it is uh, giving us uh, this uh, huge savings in terms of energy use and in terms of GFC emissions, no? So, uh, just, yeah. sorry. Yes. Go ahead, Carol. No, 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 I just, I just have a question. Are you, are you taking out copper off the ground? Yes. We do, we yes, are. So that's being, that's being recycled. So that's a good thing. Yes. Yeah, it's circular exactly. economy. Yeah, also, we are so, doing, yeah, we so, are so, doing so, everything. That's yeah. also a part of the taxonomy. So, I know, uh, I know. Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and well, and, and yes, uh, Son, uh, to your question, uh, the bond was very well received by investors. Um, first of all, because uh, investors uh, were used to uh, to you know to deal with other, uh, let's say, um, usual users of uh, green bonds such as electricity companies, uh, utilities companies, or banks, or and telcos were very much unknown in this uh, world. No? So they were uh, keen to diversify their investments. And this is why uh, uh, our agreement was very much uh, well uh, received, but also because we were uh, very much focusing on one project with real KPIs and with uh, KPIs that uh, could be followed by investors and KPIs really uh, focused and, and really uh, real things, right? And in terms of, of, uh, of what we were uh, trying to convey with, with investors. No, we had five times the demand. Um, okay, now that's what I was looking for. You did a billion dollar, a benchmark size bond, the first step of pioneering, and it gets five times demand. Like, yes. that's a pretty impressive level of over, over subscription rate, I have to say. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so, so you've proven that it works in terms of investor demand, yeah. Now we need to look at the metrics and the tools. So we've done some work in the European taxonomy. We're very clear. It's only the beginning. We haven't addressed it. We're, we've asked the sustainable finance platform that is going to be set up, is currently being set up by the European Commission, to continue to do work in this area, to do further work in this area, to flesh out some of the things we're going to talk about today that can be, that can be used. For all our listeners, this webinar will be available afterwards on YouTube and on podcasts. Uh, in multiple platforms. So details will be available at the Climate Bonds website and there's a page at the end of this webinar, if you wish. Please ask questions and for our panelists, 
please feel free to answer any questions you see in the Q&A box uh, yourselves if it looks, there are some simple ones there. But um, let me, let's, let's look into some further areas that could be involved in this. You've talked about the fiber optic transition, fantastic. Can you tell us a bit more from Telefonica's perspective of where you see uh, further investments that are pertinent to this discussion? In a way, I'm asking you to give us more detail about what we should do in the taxonomy work. Sure. Maya, you want to address this? Yeah. Um, okay, how, how we see it, because we, we had an, a framework before issuing a green bond, so, and, and the framework is, is bigger than, than, the, than our first green bond, because we, our first green bond was very much focused on, on the network transformation and, and all that, uh, the story that, that Hema just shared with you. But how we see it, because we have to, to as, our, as a sector, and I'm going to talk about Telefonica, but this is not our only story. Sure. Uh, we have to, to, be, to be very careful with energy efficiency, we, we, with energy consumption. Consumption. We have, as and Carol mentioned it very clearly, uh, we have a challenge. So we have to keep uh, energy as flat as possible. Although we are going to increase in digitalization because our clients and society needs uh, the digital world, and uh, we have to to have this uh, renewable source also. So we, it's about energy, so demand, and it's about the the source. And and we have as as a sector, we have to really in increase the, the, the renewable source in matrix in our, in our own matrix. So there we, we are working with PPAs, with green certificates, but also we have to work on self-generation. And, and I think this is a, good, a big challenge of, of 5G and what, what is coming on and how is it going to be linked with renewable sources. And this is a thing that could be included in, in, in future bonds. We have included in our second green bond because we have issued a, a, second, a second green bond uh, at the beginning of 2020. And we, there we have included uh, also self-generation. So not only net transformation, but also self-generation. And, and this is going to be probably bigger in, in the future. And, and other competitors, I think they are doing also the same. But I think we have to think also not only, only about greening off, our own sector, but how we are going to be capable of greening by other sectors. Mm -hmm. So the yeah. influence of digitalization to really decarbonize the economy. And I think uh, if you can move this to the next I, slide. I, I this is my cue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I think this is, I mean, and, and I think sectors, other sectors are, are different, but in our case, I think the, the greening off is really relevant and, and Carol and, and Hema mentioned it very well, very well, but the greening by has a very much bigger potentiality for the mitigation of climate change and adaptation of climate change. So we really can influence on the energy sector, transport, transport sector, cities, industry, agriculture, and, uh, and really in all the way we live, so well-being, because we, we have to work from home, we have to behave in another way, and only with digital vision we can, we can really avoid some emissions that we have uh, nowadays. And um, uh, for that, we, we have not, uh, and, and no, uh, with Internet of Things, for instance, technologies, we can be include, they can be included in a, in a future uh, green bond. So Maya, why not? what does the Internet of Things mean for us lay people? Okay, okay. Uh, well, I'm an environmentalist, so I'm not an expert on this. So I think I will, I will use a language that, that could be enter, okay. understand, understand by, by everyone. So it's connecting things. So all the things we have at home, it could be um, a washing machine, but a car. What about... Uh, Do I want my washing machine connected? How is it going to help? Yeah, well, maybe not the washing machine, but maybe the refrigerator. So everything you have at home. But I mean, what it, what is very useful is to have everything connected because once, I mean, not now, but in 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 decades, in maybe in one decade, so in twenty thirty or in when, in twenty forty, everything will be connected, and there you will ha we will have everything with uh, with um, with a monitoring in remote monitoring. There will be less. Um, uh, less damages and they will be fixed remotely. So this is something related with with renewable, with sorry sorry with circular economy, but also with obsolescence and with uh, with emissions coming from transport, for instance. And so we can also monitor maintenance. We presumably can do real time monitoring of energy yeah. usage. And so if I've got a solar plant and I want to save money and not buy money from the grid in peak, but solar on the roof. I can realize when I see that. Answer, that that's like, a, a smart grid. Right, right? So smart grid. Yeah, sure. A smart grid distributed the generation. So There's why not in, in our own rooms? And uh, we'll all will, I mean, in the future, the, the, I mean, there will, the utilities will be at home also. So we mm. will all have uh, in our roofs solar panels and 
all the, the grids will be connected. So it's not just the general grids that will mm. be connected, but also domestic domestic grids that will be connected. And for that, we need, we need the ICT, we need the Internet of Things, we need the smart meters, and we need uh, platforms to, to, to make this uh, easily to the users. No? So with that, how, how, what, what are we going to, to enable? We are going to enable to have a more efficient use of, use of energy mm -hmm. and, and the source will be more renewable than, than it is at the moment. So, and, and for that, we need, to, we need the Internet of Things. And I can also so, warm up my home before I get home in winter, right? I can do that. Just check yeah, it. Sure. Well, th th <laughs> I think you will see that, not, not in 10 years, you will see that in, in maybe okay. in, three, in three years. Great. In terms, um, but, if, I, if I may yeah, say no. something, uh, Sana and, and Maya, just to complement what Maya is saying with some numbers, we are expecting in the in the next few years to to or, or the, it is expected to to be 100 billion people and things connected to the to the internet, and we are uh, we are expecting to have a growth in fixed and uh, traffic by by uh, fourfold and in mobile traffic by fivefold. So. Uh, we are really uh, expecting a huge increase of, of this, and, 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 and this is going to be directly, directly in, uh, integrated to the efficiency of different sectors, mm -hmm. no? such as the ones that you have been commenting right now. For example, transportation, or for example, uh, uh, buildings, and, 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 you know, and a number of things that we are uh, trying to tackle from, from the services. No? Yeah. May, may I just go, go back to one point because there were a lot of questions also about greenhouse gas accounting and I was mm -hmm. want to connect it a bit to this discussion um, because one of the biggest challenges for me and EBRD, I'm responsible also for, for basically tracking climate finance, basically also yeah, what are the impacts de facto of all, all these ICT investments and how can we, what are the metrics that we need to use for basically measuring the greenhouse gas footprint and also the energy savings. I think that's the that's a key challenge, also a key challenge for the for the platform. And uh, again, I show you drinking a cup of tea. And I would say a cup of tea is about the same energy content uh, of about 500 Google search. Uh, because one Google search is about 0.3 megawatt, uh, 0.3 watt hour. Uh, so um, that gives you a little bit of an impression on the type of, I would say, fundamental uh, metrics that we need. And, yeah, I can give you one example of, um, yeah, we have this trading platform from eBay. And eBay is one of the pioneers in energy, energy efficiency um, and also in, in, I would say, more systematic thinking. That was the whole, the whole element also about, about eBay. And um, about eight years ago, they were really looking at how can we decarbonize our, our activities. They looked at the way their software where was being implemented. And they came up with a very interesting metric, which was basically what is the CO2 emissions per trade and um, basically they, they, they focused on why are why, is, why these emissions are quite substantial what can we do and basically they they came up with I would say a concept of um, I would call it um, uh, um, uh, flexible redundancies where they basically are uh, some, of, some of these software that was running was running on a much I would say higher level than actually was needed um, and in the end they came up with an energy saving per per trade between 80 and 90%. So that is a huge saving that is possible on, on a service level. And I think you gave a lot of examples here about, um, I, would, I would say, services that are being uh, applied or being enabled by, by ICT. And it would be very interesting to see if we can also develop sector-specific metrics. Uh, how can we basically see the, the, the CO2 footprint of, 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 the, of, the, uh, of the ICT um, action that is basically enabling these uh, these great things i think there's a there's a big challenge there but also a huge opportunity yeah i think i think you, you, you make a good point carol i think we are we have to do that on other sectors but we have a great experience of doing it in our own sector so we are in i mean in implemented power, power saving futures so this is this software you're mentioning for for many years now so we are really focusing very much on energy efficiency since I think Telefonica for the last 10 years has a really a dedicated team to energy efficiency. And, and this is why we have learned a lot about this software thing, this how, how to, to do the same without less energy consumption. So it's about 
the, the software and what you mentioned about energy efficiency, but it's also about choosing the more efficient technology for the future. And there we have this optical fiber. So removing copper is a great, a great investment. We are thinking about the future. We are putting there the, the most efficient technology the one that is going to 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 really cap avail, uh, av avail, available us to to put the best technology to our clients, but also is really the the best business. So it's, it's software, but it's also the best technology. And there, uh, I want to to write about the thing about 5G because probably it's, it's the thing that that uh, some of the audience can can think about. Because do we, uh, do we really need 5G to achieve the objectives? Yeah. This is, a, this is a good point. This is, um, I, I mentioned it. Because sometimes 5G could be a, um, could increase the energy consumption, but we have to think about the benefits of it. And if we do not have benefits, then no. But if we do have benefits, and, and because they, they, I mean, with 5G, we are going to be able to put these smart grids as, as far as we want. To, to the health cannot be developed at, at, as, uh, as far as, as we want it without fees. So we, right. um, there are some technologies that we will need for the capabilities that we, we want for the future. But we have, I mean, it's a thing of frost and crunch. And this is, I mean, we do not need 5G for everything, but for certain uh, products and services, we will need it. Um, interesting point about e-health. We didn't talk about that so much, but um, of course, there's an enormous number of applications of ICT in the health sector uh, going forward, from monitoring to remote surgery, which really depends remote on surgeon. 5G. You can't do it on 4G. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. Which, which is fantastic, because if you're, if you're someone living in Palermo, you'll be able to get access to a specialist in Milano for that, which is very difficult to do at the moment. And so in terms of the of allowing uh, centers of excellence to be accessed across the world, this will be incredibly important and allow a uh, much more uh, democratic approach to the access to key services, potentially, if we do it right. If we yeah, do yeah. it right. If do it right, yeah. But 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 it is. I mean, this is so we have to give a, a 5G like a great opportunity, but we have to think it doing it also switching off legacy networks. So and, and Carol mentioned that before. So we have to think about upgrading networks, thinking of the technology, but we have to think about uh, increasing the energy consumption. As, as, uh, so maybe switching up 3G, 2G, I mean, I mean, whatever we can do for that. And, and this is a thing that Telefonica is also doing. And, uh, and, and so putting optical fiber without removing copper, could be could be feasible but then you cannot achieve the efficiency that we are achieving so it's about so technologies are there but we have to implement it in a good way and this is an information we have to give to investors and to to analysts because we have to do it in the right way and this is a thing that the taxonomy should take into, into account yeah, and can I, can, oh, sorry. sorry, Carol, go ahead. Yeah, I, can, uh, I just want to respond also to the, to the q and I'm looking a little bit at them as well. And Good. There's one, there's one response. Uh, Spain is also leading on nano-satellites. And uh, I'm also, this bit of a, my hobby topic It's also with satellites and, and use of <laughs> spatial, I would say, spatial opportunities. Uh, I would say there is a big opportunity there. But do you think that uh, satellite and satellite systems uh, can be at a certain moment also replace carbon fiber optics as the more energy efficient option? Yep. I don't know. I mean, uh, <laughs> we we don't. I mean, um, that's something that we have in Telefonica. We have dealt with for for many years. Uh, we we have abandoned that because um, in the past satellite was kind of very expensive, and I think that the way in which uh, both fixed and mobile networks are uh, evolve and are being right now uh, put into place, I think, uh, we, I think that we are taking into account this uh, efficiency in terms of energy consumption that, that is needed. No? And the example is that, uh, for example, us mm -hmm. in the, in, in Maya has been trying to, to, to understand for our CEO, if with this huge crisis that we are living and the uh, amount of traffic that has increased through our network during these three months, what happened with the energy consumption? And, and Maya can say that at the end, uh, we are still flat. And this is because we had a very uh, good, uh, let's say, strategy in terms of uh, trying to put in place energy efficiency projects through software, through you know, different uh, kind of options 
that are really helping us to, to do this. So, no? so I, I think that at least in Telefonica, uh, we are betting a lot on, on fiber and on 5G deployment as a feature of, of the networks. No? Uh, Emma, you've also got a very big Latin American uh, footprint. And one of the questions that's been asked that you might have seen from, uh, I'm going to use his name here, Gian, Gian Leo Frizzari at the Inter-American Development Bank, who we work with a lot, is when we're going into a new sector, that is, we're taking ICT infrastructure to places where there is no infrastructure already, how do we think about that in terms of this issue around climate? I mean, do we consider new infrastructure in uh, rural Peru as being important, as uh, clearly qualifying? Um, how do we judge this? It might be a question for you, Carol, as well. But I have first. to, yeah, well, I, I have to say that there are very, very interesting things going on in Latin America. First, you need to be a little bit um, imaginative or, you know, you need to figure out how because you cannot uh, transport the same model, the same, uh, let's say, deployment infrastructure as you are doing in developed countries, because simply there is no, maybe the, the same infrastructure going on, the same regulation in terms of governments and the same things. For example, we are doing a, a very interesting and nice project, which is uh, Internet Para Todos, which is being set up in Peru, which is deploying networks, mobile networks, through a very radical and disruptive uh, different way. Right, mm -hmm. which is in, in, in this kind of deployment are using uh, solar energy for uh, the energy uh, consumption uh, for the network. No? That's and cool. We are deploying that uh, in the in the forest, and we and, and there are another different things in terms of, for example, using big data for analyzing pollution in in, in big cities like Sao Paulo or or Mexico City. No? So I think that. Uh, from our uh, point of view, and I don't mind if you want to complement this, but there are very, there are going on very interesting things that are maybe not exactly the same as if you would deploy things in the in the developed markets. But I would say that the efficiency is needed in every in everywhere, and uh, maybe for them that are uh, in an starting in an earlier starting point, they can take advantage of the of the technology in a much more deeper way, no? I would say. Yeah, I, th I think, uh, think in Latin America, the, well, the, the electricity grid is, is, uh, is not as, as it is in Europe. So we have to use a lot of renewable sources uh, with, because we have all grids, off grid sites. Yeah, and, absolutely. And there, and there uh, in the past, and, and we still have uh, power generators, no, running out uh, 24 seven and, and that's, uh, you know, carbon emissions all the time. I mean, coming, coming, and uh, and we have to, and we are removing that, and we are we are substituting them by e-hybrid systems, solar panels, and uh, and there we have the opportunity to 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 put in place some uh, technologies that in Spain and in Europe it takes some time because the business case is not sometimes. Um, uh, as good as, as it is in Latin America. So there are advantages there, mm. and uh, and. And we, we are we are facing different projects, more ingenious projects, and yeah, more more yeah. clever projects for probably. And um, but efficiency is it's an issue everywhere. Carol, maybe, maybe, yeah, I would uh, because I also want to respond to one of the questions, and the question is basically related to this topic, and it's about promotion banks. Well, I would say let's call ourselves a, 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 a multilateral development bank, and we basically start to realize. I would say it's already a few years ago, but it's getting more and more, and it's also very relevant for the EU taxonomy, that in essence, uh, access to data is so important. It's, 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 it is as, as important as access to food, access to health services, access to education, mm. um, access also to, to finance, because that's a, that's a hugely important thing. Basically, having a mobile network enables also very, I would say, isolated communities uh, if you have a phone, yeah, you are able to open a bank account. Um, but these are extremely essential elements. Um, and that's also why um, assisting countries and assisting projects for multilateral development banks is, is a key topic. Uh, it's a key development issue. And I think that's also Im important to realize also in light of the EU taxonomy. Yeah, if you bring the, um, I would say, the sustainability to a broader also in positive social impact, there is a strong element there as well. Um, so therefore, there's definitely a role 
for in development finance for um, for ICT solutions. So this means that John Lowe is going to go back to his team now and roll out a huddle ICT green finance program, right, John Lowe? We'll come back to you on the next webinar. Um, yeah, that, that would be a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we're, we're running towards the end of our time. On yeah. this really cool illustration, thank you Telefonica, that's on the screen for those of you who can see it now, we've looked at a range of different areas. I just want to see what haven't we said that we should alert people about that's relevant and that also in the next stage of taxonomy development place, uh, process, we should tease out and put on the record and include in the taxonomy. Maybe you may start us off. What have we missed so far? What else can you throw in? Well, agenda. we we had we had had conversations in the past with with the group the experts. No, no, I mean today. Smart, no, today, smart waste management, for example. I I don't know what that is. A specific thing. So do I, have, do I have a chip in my in a garbage bin? Me, no, I think I think what what is needed <laughs> is to to include all the digitalization in the different sectors, and it's mentioned in transport, for instance, but okay. it's not mentioned in other sectors, and it has to be done in a more specific way and in a more inspiring way, so that that the people can can know what what can they do there, and uh, and also in the ICT sector, and now nowadays is really is tiny, you know, it's it's about uh, data, so data centers. Yeah, okay, and, and the, the, the thing about data. But we yeah. suggested, and we suggest to include networks. I mean, it's, it's good that data centers are there, but what about the networks? And we are the network, and, and we cannot have this kind of conversation without the networks. Yeah. So we really have to, to say that some, I mean, somehow they are aligned align with, with mitigation and the adaptation uh, strategies we need as, 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 yeah, as humankind. So, so in Europe, we need digitalization agenda to be, to be aligned with the with the environmental agenda, and there the taxonomy have to include the digital sector in a more proper way. So that's a, that's I, clear, I might say, message, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I might say that that now, I mean, it does not reflect the reality of the sector. I mean, this is what I can say. Right. So we have to include net networks, and there we need to to be there. Probably, I mean, the network sector, no, 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 telephonic itself, and and we need to to include the the digitalization of of the the economy in a more proper way. So with uh, with Internet of Things uh, examples and and thresholds if they are needed, but maybe sometimes they are not needed, as as Karen mentioned with the with the data driven solutions. But what about cloud? So we, when when you when you put cloud solutions and it was mentioned before, you avoid dematerialization and uh, and energy efficiency. So I mean, cloud is not is not mentioned. What about um, artificial intelligence, blockchain? So there are other technologies coming on and and that could enable uh, a, a carbon emissions. Uh, so I think we have to reflect. So, so we need to be specific here, though, because I've got a question here from Eco in Madrid saying. What specific things could the, their development bank fund in the next five years? And I'm going to suggest you have a follow-up conversation with Eco because yeah, um, they're a fantastic we, we development bank. No, Gemma, we, we can <laughs> but, have a talk But you've them. avoided the question. Absolutely. What is smart waste management? What is, is waste management? Oh, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. It's about Internet of Things again. No, oh, it's, so it's about, for instance, connected beings with a smart, with, with, we have, we have some examples here in, in Spain. So Everyone. it's about, yeah, yeah, I mean, we, we have to with I'm, with city I'm with the city of Guadalajara. No, but we have we have example. It's it's, about, it's smart cities. So really connecting things and avoiding transportation in a more efficient way when the bin is full and not before and with the proper we, you can do okay. even do, do sensors or quality of content. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's, it's about information. But so it's, it's about information. Idea. So no 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 saving uh, time of anyone and no doing transport for nothing. So it's really about efficiency. Fantastic. And, and we, when we talk about digitalization, yeah, yeah, sure, Carol. Yeah, no, no, I just want to give you another example, Sean, uh, because then I put on my manufacturing hat. Yeah. Um, because we had a lot of discussion about plastic in the plastic industry and why is plastic under the taxonomy? And I would say one of the great developments going on at the moment is basically about, uh, I would say, watermarking of products, watermarking of materials. Yeah, so if you are able to watermark certain types of plastics, bottles, um, then you can, with an ICT solution, you are much more able to separate products. You know the original of the project, you know the, 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 the previous use, and it will wow. really enable us much better to introduce a circular economy. And the circular economy is one of the key topics that uh, the, the commission and the taxonomy is going to work on in the, in the next future. And this, pref this project is really lifting up. I would say there are big organizations like the, the, the biggest supermarket chains in the world involved in this project in the development. And this is going to happen in the next five years. So that's a very interesting development.
this is an incredibly exciting agenda. And if our listeners, if you're not tuned into this, if this is due to you, whoa, this is going to explode. I have to ask Emma though, is Telefonic and Walk Yes, of course. We are, we are exploring not only more green bonds, but social bonds and sustainable bonds. So we are kind of very much committed with that. So soon. And I just wanted to say, Sun, that uh, everything can be smart, Sun, even us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's not go too far. <laughs> um, so thank you for joining us. Any last thoughts before we close off, Maya, Carol, Hammer? No, thank well, you for uh, inviting us. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, this is a great opportunity, a great opportunity for, for every industry. I think that the EU taxonomy uh, should help a lot a lot to understand us, to understand us in our, in our dialogue with investors, with the industry, with our competitors, and should we really move ahead and to, should be really established and should be, in our case, uh, as Maya said, it's very important that our sector uh, should be taken into account and should be, you know, very well, uh, very well uh, analyzed there. Thank you very much for inviting us. Yeah. Carol, last word. No. No, I thought it was beautiful already as last word. I think I'm, I'm really looking forward to continue the discussion because the ICT is, is also relevant for the other, yeah. I would say, Me too. four components, four components of the EU taxonomy to be developed. And I'm Absolutely. really hoping it will, it, it, it will lift off uh, in the next, uh, next period. Maya, as a climate change professional, you have a, you're lucky, aren't you, in this job? I am so lucky, yeah. I've been working in Telefonica and environmental topics for 20 years now. I feel like now we are we are doing important things. So, so we have the opportunity. So thank you everyone for joining us on this call. This is the wrap up. There are uh, a few other questions. Some of the questions about, for example, how do we reconcile fiber active rollout, circular economy, are all really good questions for the next stage of taxonomy development. We do want to try and get more detail and expand people's conception using a taxonomy as a toolkit to do it. Taxonomy is a procurement plan for the future, for the future we need for our kids. The crisis we're experiencing now drives home the urgency of doing we cannot wait. Otherwise, we will see far worse crises going forward. So we've got to move on this. The taxonomy is not finished. We need to continue to elaborate both the areas that are already out there, as we've heard today in such fantastic detail from our speakers, but also as we develop new ideas and new thoughts, because we're in the process of reimagining our planet, reimagining it as sustainable, low carbon, as sustainable, and as climate resilient, because we've made a mess already and we are going to get a world, a century of extreme weather. So we've got a plan for that. Uh, if we do this, the future we create is a future our children can live in without having to sacrifice so much of what we value now. And that's the, that's the prize that we're after. Thank you again for joining us. This webinar will be available, as I said, on um, uh, YouTube and on podcasts. Take a quick note or a screen grab of the page in front of you. You've got access to the page. But otherwise, go to the climatebonds.net and look up webinars. You'll get everything you need to know. Um, we will have more discussions as this agenda unfolds. The taxonomy is every Thursday, 1500 Central European time another look at another part of the taxonomy for the next six weeks. So put this in your diary, keep it free, and join us for, for different areas like transport and wastewater management and so on in future weeks. Thanks everyone for joining us, and thank you most of all for being committed to creating a sustainable future. Thank you, Maya, thank you, Carol, thank you, Hema. Thank you. Thank, Bye -bye. You. thank you very much. Bye -bye.